nice talk. And so now uh, we have Antonio Martinez in RS on unveiling the high velocity jet powered by the massive star MWC 349A. Um, Antonio, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. So today I'm going to talk to you about our latest results regarding the modeling of the hydrogen radio recombination line emission obtained with ALMA towards the massive star NWC 349A, which have revealed the presence of a high velocity jet. A bit of context first about the system. Uh, the star is a massive star, mass between 20 and 30 solar masses, surrounded by a circumstellar disk, which is detected also in the, in the infrared. It's located at 1.2 kiloparsec from the sun. The spectral classification is of a BE star. And the, evol the evolutionary status is under high debate. There are claims of it being a young star, and of the say, an evolved star. Um, this star is very bright in the radio domain. So it's been observed several times and at several wavelengths. Um, the shape of the radio continuum, what we see here is a ultra compact H2 region that has been uh, originated from the photo evaporation of the neutral disk due to the ultraviolet radiation from the central star. And from the shape of the radio continuum and the flux density obtained at different wavelengths that yield a spectral index of around 0 0.6, we conclude that this star is hosting an ionized salt flow because of the photo evaporation of this disk. Not only we observe the radio continuum, but also the hydrogen radio recombination lines, which due to the particular circumstances in this, uh, in this system, they are suffering from the maser amplification in some, in some of the transitions, which leads to very detailed studies of the innermost ionized regions. So for this work, we have new ALMA data that will be presented in detail in a paper by Pasadeto. We have band six and band seven um, observations, and the spectral setup has been has been designed to cover the emission from the H30 alpha and H26 alpha radio recombination lines, and also the uh, self calibration has, has been applied to the data to to reach a dynamic range of around a thousand. And you can see here in the ALMA uh, band six continuum that the bipolar shape that was seen in the VLA images is also obtained with ALMA. So what do we really do with observations to analyze them? Well, here I'm presenting you the uh, another plot of the radio continuum contours in white. And, and in color scale, you have the, the line emission from, from H30 alpha. So what we do is to, for each channel, its uh, radial velocity or frequency value, we obtain the average position in order to reconstruct uh, which emission and which velocity comes for, from which region of the star. So we obtain this uh, centroid, this Gaussian center for each velocity channel, and uh, we plot them all together into a single plot. Uh, this is, for example, what we obtained with uh, the Patada Bureau observations in 2011. And we see, for example, here that the red shifted emission is essentially located at the left part of the system, while the blue shifted is at the right part. And how, how does the ALMA data look like in comparison to this one? Well, we can see that uh, there's a clear improvement, both in terms of spectral resolution and spatial resolution, and also that we have extended the, the range where we have uh, the, the radial velocity range has been extended. Uh, we have more points here extending to higher radial velocities. So the improvement is, is clear. To analyze these kind of products from observations, we, we use a relative, relative transfer code called uh, MORELI, which stands for Model for Recombination Lines. Um, this model essentially solves the relative transfer equation for each line of sight. And um, in the case of MWC 349A, it's been proven in previous works that uh, double cone structure works uh, very well to reduce the observations. And so we will use this uh, model again to, to uh, model the, the ALMA data. So how did the old, the previous model do with uh, Plateau Bureau observations? Well, uh, we have a system uh, which uh, is made of a neutral rotating disk, which is not shown here, it's not white. 
then uh, there, are, there is an ionized layer of this neutral disk, which we call the ionized Keplerian disk. And this is ionized because of the uh, emission of the central star. And from this disk, we have a photo evaporation, and this uh, leads to, a, to an ionized wind, which is expanding radially at 60 kilometers per second and rotating in a Keplerian law along with the disk. So this worked very fine to, to reproduce the Platoda Bureau observations. How does this model do with the ARMA observations? Well, we see that it's not that bad, but it needs a bit of rework here. We see, for example, that the, that the velocity coming from the ionized disk is well reproduced. We don't need to make big changes here. The channels corresponding to the ionized wind are not that good, so it needs a bit of rework. And definitely, there's a new set of points that we didn't see before that, uh, that need a new kinematical component to be described. So. Uh, this is a sketch of the previous model. It's uh, similar to the uh, previous image. This is only the northern cone, so we have the neutral disk. We have the ionized layer rotating, and we have the ionized wind, which is expanding radially and rotating. And then what we have done is to add a jet. A jet that um, uh, it's not very collimated, so it fills the entire wind cavity. And it is tilted with respect to the rotational axis of the, of the system. So the northern cone is facing the observer and the southern cone is uh, facing away from it. Uh, so yeah, this would be this is the, the jet model that we have uh, we have uh, tried for these observations. So how does the centroid map change once we add the jet? Okay, we add the jet expanding uh, at 20, uh, 250 kilometers per second, which is polycollimated, as I told you. And we see an improvement here. We see that uh, the, the shape of the centroid map of ALMA, it's uh, more similar now to, to the modeled one. And the next step to, to keep on uh, obtaining the ALMA observations was, was to bring these branches uh, a bit closer to the central star. These branches originated uh, likely from the jet to bring them uh, closer to the star. So what we did was to remove half of the Keplerian rotation inside the wind and the jet. This is an average case between the rotating and non-rotating case. And the important, thing, the important thing here is that the jet and wind are rotating. So they are extracting angular momentum from the system, allowing to, for accretion to take place. The last step to fine tune this model was to introduce a very tiny uh, radial deceleration. So if we introduce this small deceleration, we have uh, a better aperture result. And um, this would be the, the final model. This would be the, the, the model that we, are, that we are presenting to reproduce the ALMA observations. Not only we model the centroid position from the emission, but, all, uh, but also the, the line profile, which is a complementary analysis. And um, it, uh, it breaks from the genesis that we have with the centroid map. The most important outcome from this result would be the central mass, which is of uh, 23 solar masses, according to our model. And as I told you before, we have obtained two lines, H30 alpha and H26 alpha. So I showed you before the H30 alpha uh, model. We applied this exact same model to the H26 alpha, and we see that uh, it's double checked in the sense that it also works for the H26 alpha emission. Only thing here is that we have addressed the saturation of the maser, which is important for this line, not, not for it's 30 alpha, but it is important for this one. Yeah, this is a sum on the on the lower on the lower intensity features. So let's talk a bit about the implications of these results uh, regarding the wind launching mechanisms. There are two main models. One is the uh, the disk wind model, and then we have also the X wind models. And they differ essentially in the launching region of the wind. So in these wind models, we have a launching um, likely far from the start, let's say uh, tens of astromega units. And not only it's launched from that point, but over a wide range of radii. So we have a continuous region where, where the wind and jet are being ejected. While in the X wind model, we have only ejection from the inner edge of the accretion disk, which is typically less than an astromega unit away from the star. And the, and the ejection occurs only in this region, not over a wide range. So our jet, which is poorly collimated and shows an onion-like structure for the velocity field, 
we believe that it's uh, more compatible with the disk green model. And this, this model was also uh, proposed for the star in previous works by Path Rubio due to the 24 astronomical unit launching uh, for the win that was from before. So we, our result now uh, is uh, in agreement with this previous idea of the win, this win model. Regarding the, the evolutionary status of the source, uh, I told you before that it's uh, under debate whether it's a young or an evolved star. Well, if it's a young star, uh, the fact of having a poorly collimated jet will be in agreement with the uh, evolutionary sequence proposed by Bether and Shepherd in 2005, in which a massive star at the first stages of its formation hosts a very collimated and powerful jet. And then as time goes by and, and the central star accretes more material, the jet uh, opens up and, and becomes less powerful. If the star is young, our jet will be in agreement with this late stage of its formation. So, yeah. Um, yeah. About the tilted jet, well, we need the jet to be tilted to reproduce the observations. There's no way to reproduce them is if it's uh, aligned with the rotational axis. So the uh, the causes behind this tilting could be, for example, uh, an inner binary inside the single star disk, which have, has been proposed before for other systems, such as RCRA in, in the Diakoito 2019. Um, this inner binary would um, cause a precession movement on the jet, so it could be the case for our star. Uh, NWC3498 has been proposed before uh, to be a binary, an inner binary system due to different reasons, such as the variability in the, in the light curve. So it's a possibility. Also, it could be due to a warp disk as the one found in Monothetos R2 IRS2 in Jimenez Serra et al. 2020. Um, this warping could be itself caused by a binary companion. And if the jet is launched from the disk, uh, a, a warping of the disk would likely deflect the, the direction of ejection of the jet. So that's another possibility. And last, uh, regarding the, the radial deceleration that we introduced as a, as a last step, uh, we want to note that uh, the star is uh, surrounded by CO emission, which is maybe coming from the parent cloud from which the star was formed. So we cannot discard that the, that the jet is interacting with the medium. In fact, the, in the work by Tafoya et al. in 2021, they observe also a, a massive star with ALMA, and they also see that the jet is um, decelerating radially, and they offer two explanations, one of them being the interaction with the surrounding medium. So that's uh, one possibility. They also tell that, uh, well, ejection as a question can be episodic, so maybe different episodes of, of accretion ejection could, could have happened at different velocities. So that would uh, be the cause behind the, the difference in, in, in the radial velocities. So that could be also a possibility for, for our system. We would have to monitor the emission and to probe larger, uh, larger distances uh, to, to be sure what's, what's going on here. Two minutes. Yeah, and I'm and and thank you. I I will leave you with my conclusions here. So, uh, with Alma, we have obtained for the first time the high velocity emission in this in this well known system that uh, has been explained by us with a high velocity jet expanding together with the wind that we already had. Um, this um, this jet is rotating as well as the wind, so uh, angular momentum is being removed. From the system, which means that likely accretion from the disk is still ongoing from this uh, for the system. Uh, the jet is poorly collimated, so it has to be. If it's young, a young star, it should be in a late stage of its formation. The tilting of the jet might be explained by an inner binary companion, which has not been yet directly detected, but it's uh, likely to be there for uh, different results. And yeah, the main conclusion is that uh, these um, maser amplified radio recombination lines, when studied with uh, with very precise instruments and such as such, a, such as ALMA, and uh, properly modeled with non-LT relative transfer models, yield uh, a unique tool to study the innermost regions of of these of these systems, with a um, resolution of even sub milliard seconds. 
and that would be it. Thank you. Thank you, Antonio, for this really nice talk. Do we have questions in the audience? Yeah, um, so for now, I don't see any questions. I can ask mine. So this jet, do you, like, could you observe other molecules to try to constrain your, uh, your velocities or your uh, parameters? Um, with over molecules, did you detect anything else? Well, uh, the idea is to, of course, to observe any other tracers of this jet. Uh, for example, the forbidden lines of nitrogen or, uh, yeah, the forbidden lines in the optical and near infrared would be a, a good tracer of this of this jet emission. Also, uh, maybe water masers could say something, as in the case of Cepheus HW2. Those have revealed, um, uh, those are used to trace the jet emission. So yes, we want to, to, to keep on observing so that we can constrain further the, the nature of this jet. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So we have a question of Sebastian Muller. So he says, great analysis of kinematics. Have you searched for evidence of a processing jet? Um, well, not for the moment, because um, this is the uh, the first set of observations that have revealed the jet. Um, if we observe in the future, uh, maybe with Alma or with other uh, with other facility, uh, we can uh, if we see, for example, a difference in the orientation of the jet, which is uh, which is an important uh, parameter affecting the result of the of the model. Um, if we see a difference in the orientation, we can, uh, of course, start to constrain the, um, maybe a precision movement. But for the moment, we cannot tell from one set of observations. Uh, we cannot, we did not really tell whether it's processing or not. So in the future, with more observations, our model is very, very uh, sensitive to the orientation of the jet. So that could be tested. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have another question from Claudia Tocci. Um, do you have an estimate of the binary separation or mass limits of the companions? And by the way, congratulations, very nice talk. Thank you. Um, I'm afraid not. I do not have a separation value. It has to be an inner binary, that's for sure. Uh, I, yeah, but I, but I, I don't recall um, a separation value. Maybe uh, the work by Jorgensen et al. in 2000 they analyzed the, the periodicity of the light curve in the R magnitude. So maybe you, we can find an estimate there. But uh, for my model, um, I cannot tell what would be the, the separation. So I would have to look into that. Maybe I'll reach you later. With OK, so Thank we you. have time for one more minute. So one more question. Are you able to constrain the interaction with the ISM and how that may affect the jet slash wind? Um, with my current model, uh, uh, focused on the hydrogen radio recombination lines emission, I don't believe that I can, that I will um, be able to model the interaction with the ISM, but I'm sure that uh, other models with other molecules will be able to to constrain that one and in fact as i as i told um we have uh yes uh so we have co emission around the star so i would really like to to be able to model the, inter the possible interaction between this uh ejection of material and the and the and the, um, and the surrounding material so and yeah and, and and to know how it is affecting the 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 nearby interstellar medium so yeah, I cannot. Uh, I did not do it with this set of observations and with this model, but that's a that's a, a fabulous idea for the future. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it seems that um, you have already uh, future plans for your work. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if we have uh, questions in the Slack. Unfortunately, nothing else from Slack. Okay. Uh, so. We can uh, thanks once again, Antonio, for his really nice talk. And we can go to 